Welcome back to the Smugsy Show. I'm Smugsy, your host. Every Wednesday we meet here to talk about important things and important people. As some of you may know, before I began identifying as the Barstool Cougar, I was the token intellectual for the Kirk Minahan Show. And I loved it, I except that it was too long and wasn't funny, had very little talent or purpose or direction. Um, not so, not the case for the case. Kirk Minahan's new podcast, real crime podcast, allegedly about the disappearance of Jennifer Fay from Brockton, Massachusetts in 1989. She's a 16-year-old. Well, um, episode two dropped this week. I reviewed episode one last week and gave it a B plus. Episode two was this week and you could say that episode two, the theme was white trash. Um, maybe Kevin, you know, Kevin Boston, um, that's his alias. Maybe maybe he's not white. Maybe the drug dealing, gun toting, psychopath, stalker, burglar. Um, maybe race doesn't matter, but I think since he's known to hang around with the Aryan Brotherhood, you know, the neo-Nazi prison gang, it's a fair inference. And maybe race explains why Kevin isn't in jail. Maybe he's not in jail. He had that long rap sheet that Kirk went over and with a fine tooth comb. Um, you know, long rap sheet. Plus, he apparently killed Faith and cut up her body and left the parts in the quarry. Maybe he's not in jail because of his race, because in South Carolina, um, there's plenty of jails and there's plenty of people in jail. The incarceration rate is higher. It's like the highest in the world, higher than the United States, higher than all of civilized worlds. Yeah, so there's lots of people in jail, but they're mostly black. Um, like a third of the population in South Carolina are black, but two-thirds of the prison population are black. So they're teeming full of black men, mostly, who've committed petty crimes, but not Kevin, you know, Boston. Kevin is free. He's a free man to terrorize Keisha. And, um, I mean, it's it was riveting, except that Kirk reading aloud Kevin's Facebook posts where he was terrorizing Keisha. Um, that was like getting my teeth drilled at the dentist. I thought that, so there's a few marks um, for that. It'd be, episode two is a, B, a solid B though, I must say. I mean, I really liked it. I'm hooked. I mean, I do have some concerns. My my number one concern, of course, is for Kirk's well-being, his health. Um, I mean, who knew that there could be a group more wretched and forlorn than the Minifans. <laughs> I mean, um, talk about riffraff. Uh, the people, the parade of horribles in the case podcast is um, mind numbing in its abject despair. I mean, it seems to me the real crime in this whole story so far has been the absolute lack of parenting. I mean, what was Faith doing, an 11-year-old riding in a go-kart in traffic and the mother suggesting that her not wearing a helmet saved her life? I mean, and then Jennifer's mother, you know, saddled up to a bar, Kevin abandoned. Um, the thing, I, what I'm worried about, though, is um, what if Kevin, crazy Kevin, um, you know, meth crack addict Kevin um, who has guns and um, hangs around with the neo-Nazis. What if he kills Keisha before, you know, before this whole case comes to a close? There's supposed to be eight episodes. We have six more. We'll see. But, I mean, Kirk could jump. I mean, wh or what if these Aryan brothers, you know, they become really aggressive and want like a piece of the action and demand to have appearances on the podcast and maybe a YouTube show. I mean, this could really put Kirk over the edge. So my concern number one is Kirk coping with a cult of Kevin's. Um, concern number two, Keisha. Um, I'm just not sure 
giving out Keisha's first and last name and alias and street address was good podcast content. Um, but then again, the podcast is number three on the charts. So, um, but you know, new Kirk Minahan could be onto something, a new genre of podcast. Uh, if Killer Kevin kills Keisha, uh, real time, real crime, real crime in real time. I mean, it, it, um, instead of solving a real crime, you know, you could be causing one that, um, other than, so other than the specific concerns I have about, um, the case pushing Kirk off the edge and endangering Keisha's life and the gen, just sort of an overall general concern, um, about the state of humanity, given how dejected and forsaken the miserable cast of losers are on the case, but it's very good. And I highly, highly recommend it. Um, and it, it's nice to see Kirk, um, Minahan and his producer Steve Robinson finally getting the kudos that they deserve from the Barstool stars, you know, Kevin Clancy, Erica, Big Cat. Um, I, it's hard to believe that Kirk at one time was kind of in the doghouse at Barstool because now he's really enjoying a moment. Um, Steve, too. I mean, I'm hoping Steve's gun plays a role. Uh, but Kirk now, um, he's a big dog. He's a big dog. As you may recall, this Muggsy show, when we first got started, kind of analyzed the Kirk Minahan show using a dog metaphor. And Kirk is now one of the big dogs. But you know what? He's not the top dog. Um, Dave Portnoy remains the top dog, the alpha. And um, he put Kirk in his place when Kirk showed up on the Dave Portnoy and Eddie and Company show last week. Yeah, you probably caught that. Um, you know, it. Kirk was a guest on the show, theoretically, you know, talk about the case and um, Dave really um, just to kind of distract from the gushing and the attention that Kirk was getting and to remind people, you know, who's on top. Dave dropped a sex tape. So the conversation ended up revolving around basically his junk. Um, He's not going to be outdone by the buzz and the gushing over the case. Um, Dave released a sex tape on the interview with on the day of the interview with Kirk to draw the eye of Sauron and focus on Dave's virility and manliness instead of Kirk's new show. I mean, it wasn't a spanking or anything, but just a reminder. Um, is there a dog word for cucked? Uh, Kirk got cucked by Dave, the alpha dog. That would be social media, I think, or title, Kirk got cucked by Dave Alpha Dog. Um, that's the content that the stoolies demand and love. There's only one number one. Um, and speaking of riveting content, um, the Smugsy OnlyFans photo exhibit, we've had tremendous growth since last week, 100% growth. Um, welcome, Devin. Um, you can join Devin <laughs> and fan you five six nine nine five two nine on OnlyFans at Smugsy Girl. Um, we're just excited about the the photo exhibit, and I know our our fans are enjoying it, and I think you will too. Um, let's end the show with a few jokes to hopefully put you know spring in your step. Um, did you know that I used to work in a blanket factory, but it folded. Um, a mushroom walks into a bar and the bartender says, we don't serve mushrooms here. And the mushroom says, why? I'm a fun guy. Okay, that's bad, but um, jokes about German sausage are the worst. And to the minifans, don't join dangerous cults. Practice safe sex. Get it? Um, and that's it for this week's show. Brought to you by Smug Siggies. Sleek and elegant Siggies. Made with organic cannabis, rolled in delicate sheets of locally sourced all natural paper. Look for Smug Siggies in the Indigo and Marigold packs. Uh, look for a live show in the coming days about Smug Siggies, our exciting product that we're coming, bringing to market. Um, we have the beautiful logo on the website. Um, please subscribe to the Smugsy Show. Leave a comment. Follow me on Twitter at Smugsy Girl. In the club at Smugsy, find all your favorite Smugsy show content at syndicatemedia.net in Smugsy Studio. And until next time, this is Smugsy signing off. But if you or someone you love is a victim of domestic violence and you need help, there's a hotline you can call 1 800 799 SAFE. That's 1 800 799 7233.
And this is Muggsy signing off. Take care.